Hey Gators, um, I came up with a list of things that I think that are important for van lifers, that things that I wish I had known before I moved into my van, and I want to share some of them with you. Okay, I found 11 things, it, definitely more, but for me personally, it was 11, and it might help you, um, figure out what you want to do before you move into your van because that's why I'm doing these videos to try to help people get things together before you move into your van so you'll be set and you won't have the same hiccups as a lot of people through trial and error we've already tried and erred so now I'm trying to let you know um some things that you need okay enough babbling all right the first thing is an income. Now, whether it's a mobile, and you know, you make your money mobily by being like a traveling nurse or a phlebotomist or, you know, mechanic, whatever. If it's mobile, that's great. Um, or it, it could be a nine to five, online, whatever. However you bring your income in, you need one. Um, Cause this is a, Van life isn't a free life. It's a freeing life. I mean, you still have bills and you still have to spend money. You have to eat. You have to wash your clothes. You got to keep your van together. So you need money. So make sure you have a set income before you move into your van. And number two, a place to park. Now, a lot of people will park on the road, on the side of the um, road in cities or, or wherever, but I feel that you need to establish a place to park, whether it be your job, because my wife's job allows her to park on premises, so that's great, and you might can work out something with your employer if you have a regular nine to five, um, or you can make arrangements with a neighbor, or friend, or whoever. But you need a place to park because trying to find a different place to park every night so you can just rest, that in itself can be exhausting. So it would be a good thing for you to, you know, find parks where you can, you know, park overnight or if the Walmart in your town allows parking, wherever. But you need an established place to park because I'm telling you, I watched van dwellers you know, searching for places, getting the cops called on them and all of that. And you don't want that for your life. So if you can find you a place to park um, before you move into your van, that's, that's going to be great for you. Um, electricity. All right. I didn't think that I would need... I was going to smoke, but I decided not to. I... I um, didn't think I would, well I knew I would need electricity on board but I thought it was something I could put off until later but I wouldn't suggest it I would suggest as soon as you as you're building your van out build it with electricity off top because you're gonna need it, it it's just a have to thing um, number four bathroom now <coughs> I, we have a bathroom inside of our house, and that's great if you can manage to build you something. And I'm going to make a video of the bathroom that I made for us. But that is important because getting up at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning when you have to use the bathroom and you have to find a place out of your van, this is not, no, that's a no. Um, so make sure you have a, a place to use the bathroom. Um, number five. A comfortable place to sleep now um, for me there was two important things that I needed in this van and then everything else just fell in place but a comfortable place to sleep for my wife because she is the one who makes the money for us so I know she needs a good night's sleep you know she'd be well rested in the morning so I made it a point and that was like the first thing I concentrated on was her a comfortable place to sleep. So, and you need it too because driving 
all day or just sitting up all day. When it's time to rest, you don't want to sit up to rest. You want to lay down. So make sure you've made your comfortable place to sleep. All right, number six. Number six is get you a gym membership or a YMCA membership, 24-hour fitness. Get you a membership to a gym. You need a place not just to take showers because, you know, we use our um, rec. We, we have a recreational membership, the rec at the town we lived in. So, um, so that's what we use. Um, but I would suggest you having a membership at some facility before you move into your van because you're going to need a place to, of course, take baths. But you also want a place that you can go to get out of the van. If you don't have any place to go, you can always go to the gym. You can always go to the rec. I would suggest a 24-hour fitness because it's 24 hours. Um, but, you know, we don't have a 24-hour fitness because, I mean, we do have one in our town but we didn't get the membership because to me it was too expensive if you can afford it get the 24 hours but if you can't whatever town you live in usually has a recreation department and those prices are way cheaper than any other gym you will probably find um i've even compared the recreation department to the ymca and the rec is still cheaper the y is more expensive than the 24-hour fitness a month i'm like okay but anyway I would check into a membership for entertainment and to take baths and showers. So, Number seven is find a way to cook inside of your van. Now, I've watched, I've been studying van life, tiny house, dwelling, container homes. I've been following that for like, this is my sixth year. Five years following, one year living the life. But, um... I see van build-outs where most of the kitchens pull out the back of the van or out the side of the van. A lot of people cook outside of the van. I live in weather. I'm sorry. I Summer, winter, fall, spring. I live in the weather because that's what you will find out that you are living in the weather. And your house reflects that. So um, when it's raining outside... How can you pull your 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 kitchen out and cook? Snowing, windy. So to me, it was important because I'm a chef. So it was important for me to have a functional kitchen where I can cook inside of my van and not just a place to cook. I needed a kitchen. I needed my, my spice racks and my silverware. I needed a kitchen. So I would advise you guys to... Make a way for you to cook inside of your van. Um, number eight, heating and cooling. As you can see, I've started sweating because we haven't accomplished that yet. How we keep cool is by opening up the doors and windows. And we have fans, but when it's hot outside, they just circulate heat. So one way I know you can keep cool is find a place to go. Library, museum, wherever, mall. Find some place to go if it's too hot inside of your van and you haven't figured out how to cool it off yet. For us, what's going to happen with our upgrades is I'm getting a vent put in and um, hopefully that will help the fans circulate the air. So, but you will need a way to cool off your van and you're gonna need a way to heat your van in the winter time. And sometimes in the summertime at night, it gets cold. So you need a, you need a way to heat and cool your van. Coming into the van, not once you get in here trying to figure it out, figure it out now so you don't have to suffer. Okay, number nine is a great data plan. Now, whether you're going to be YouTubing your adventure or not, you need a good phone plan. Um, I was going with Boost. Boost suck. Sorry, Boost. But Boost Mobile on the highway, I think it's Interstate 70 or Highway 70, west or east, either way, I got no service. From Colorado to Kansas, I had no service. 435 miles. 
that's crazy. I'm paying $60 a month and I can't use my phone for hundreds of miles? No, that doesn't work. So make sure the data plan that you pick has um, coverage where you are and where you plan on going. Make sure you can get coverage. And if not, if the coverage sucks wherever with your plan, um, I would suggest a, a Wi-Fi booster. That's what we're going to upgrade to is a Wii Boost. I think that's the name of it. Um, but yeah, we're upgrading our data plan and we're amplifying that. So I would suggest you do your research and find you a data plan that's going to cover your you know, surrounding area where you're at and where you plan on visiting. Okay, number 10, a way to get your mail. Now, if you're going to be traveling or not, you're not living in a house anymore, so you don't have a house address. So what we do and what I would suggest you do is to find your um, local post office, get the zip code to the post office, and um, that's your address. Your name, general delivery, that's what you're going to put for your address, general delivery. And then the city, state, and zip code of the post office, not the town. Because where I lived, where her job was and where the post office was, same town, but two different area codes. So, I mean, two different zip codes. So, um, make sure where you're staying isn't the zip, is the same zip code as the post office because you need that. You need the same zip code as the post office, not where you're living, because it could be different. You need to check and do your research and see. But you can get mail anywhere in the U.S. if you put general delivery, the city and state you're in, and the zip code of that post office that you want to receive your mail. Okay. The 11th and last thing that I would advise you to do before you move into your van is to have a plan for your everyday whether it's work your hobbies visiting friends have something to do every day because by you living in your van it cuts out a lot of things to do in a regular house like you know cleaning up and just walking around and just being in a in a house is different it's totally different um so I would advise you to have a daily plan. You know, if you want to sit down on Sunday and write you a schedule out or an itinerary for your week, do that. But have something to do with your every day because it gets boring really quick. If you're into movies, get movies. Games, if you've seen the van tour, you've seen we have games because that's what we're into. But, um, yeah, have a plan for your every day. And um, that's about it. If I can think of any more um, things that I think that would benefit you guys to know before you move into your van, I'll make another video. But that's all I've come up with. We've been living in this van for a year now. Well, it'll be a year in October. And in this right now, it's the 30th of July. So... I don't know when this video is going to go out, but that's the date. And it'll be a year, the 12th of October. So, we're learning. It's been a year in, we're learning, and the little things that I see and, and, and notice, and if I think it will help you guys, I will definitely um, make a video and share it with you. And anything that I put out, I'm doing it to help. I'll make videos of our adventures, of course, and they'll be uploaded. I'm thinking about doing those on Sundays. And then our helpful videos or our DIYs or those type of videos will probably probably be on Fridays. That's that's the schedule that I'm trying to get going. But this I'm new to it. As you see, my first video thumbnail sucked. So I'm going to try to improve as I go. You guys, like, subscribe, and comment on this video. It would be greatly appreciated. 
Love you, Gators. Later.